Okay, this computer is now live, and then I'm going to turn on this other computer, and it will now be live. So as you guys are waiting, what I need from you is I need you guys to make sure that you guys got all the papers that you needed at the front of the door. So make sure that you guys got the paper. Alright, so today is Thursday, which is new project day. So Like that. 
fashion and makeup. Definitely display that, put it on display. Try something creative and unique to show your own personality. Okay, another recent one, how's this one, Chef? Snow blower, big old fan, we have big fans here at school that you can just sit in front of and snap a picture. Now, something we haven't talked about is how do we take a picture of ourselves? Any ideas? Tripod? What? A timer. So a timer is going to be really, really important for some of you. If you were using a cell phone, what I would do is I would set my cell phone down or pop it up or have somebody hold it and then set a self timer, make sure all of your um, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, all those settings are the way you want them. And then put it on self timer for about 30 seconds, run over, sit down, make your pose, and it'll snap. It'll take a lot of trial and error. error. Sometimes it'll be a little frustrating trying to get the shot that you want, but it's a way of trying to figure out how to take pictures of yourself because that's an important part of photography self-reflection and self-image. Okay, another example of unconventional uh, portrait photography. How would I do this in Photoshop? Let's just take one person. Yeah. Okay, so Jeremiah says I could take three different images, so the image of the head, the image of the body, the image of the feet, and in Photoshop, just kind of put it together with a little bit of space, bing, bing, boom, done. What's another way of doing this? Rory, could I take a picture of this one image and cut it up into pieces in Photoshop? Yeah, I certainly can. Is that what you're going to say, Cam? Yeah. I certainly can just take a picture of one image, make three different images, like crop same image three times and enlarge or make it smaller the way I wanted it to. So that's a really easy one to do. But again, I'm emphasizing personality in your photos. So when I look at you, I know a lot of you well enough to know kind of how you are. So make sure your personality is showing. Okay. You can do children for your portraits. You can do multiple people for your portraits. What's weird about this one? Their eyes are closed, which is a little unconventional. You normally wouldn't take a portrait, photography, or a family photo in the bathtub. So it's different, it's unique. That's where you're going to. Okay. Same, with, same with this. You can go black and white, you can go color. There's no requirement for one or the other. Um, you guys all know how to do things in Photoshop now, how to desaturate and make things black and white if you forget like them. Yeah. Here's another example. And today I'm going to show you how to do something similar to this. So if you have questions about that one, question later. How would I do this one in Photoshop?
my aperture settings, I can determine what's blurry and what's in focus. So make sure that you're manipulating your aperture settings if you're doing something like that. Again, unconventional. None of these pictures that I have shown you look like your stereotypical family photos or stereotypical uh, senior portraits. So keep that in mind. You can 
tie your faith in a creative, clever way. What I really don't want to see is just your hands in front of your face, because that's just boring, okay? Think out of the box. Think unconventional. So this person just flipped their hair back. You know, I have long hair, so it's really easy. And they put some props that maybe describe them. Maybe they really like the clean. Who knows? Again, you can use stock images and photo merge things onto your portrait to make them different and unique. So if this was just flat on portrait, it wouldn't be unconventional. But because they had that added element of a stock image and kind of molding it into this almost zombie like image, that's unconventional. You can also print your image out and do something with your image. We haven't talked about that yet. Um, but that is also a possibility. Most of you will be using props to help you along for your portrait photography also today. Okay. Okay. Silhouette. What kind of lighting is this? I haven't talked about this yet. Backlighting. Oh! Yeah, okay, then where is it? Backlighting. Backlighting. Get creative with your lighting. To get this effect, the light is coming from the back side, meaning it's behind the model, creating almost a silhouette-like image. So think about that as an option for you to use. Same person. This person is choosing to kind of show different aspects about the life. Maybe they're sad, maybe they're depressed. A lot of people do um, faces that are wrapped because that's kind of my go-to face for unconventional portraits. I have a couple of examples of that.
start to do the demo, it's optional. It's a really fun way to get a nice piece for your wizard portfolio. But this is an exercise, therefore you can't use it to turn in. It's just a nice thing to put in your portfolio. So what we're going to do is we're all going to travel to this area over here. We haven't used it yet, so just kind of crowd around. You can bring your chairs if you want to. Um, Evan, I'm going to have you twist the camera around so you can see what the, the person can see. And then I'm going to grab this other camera. Shot. 
I'm going to look at my camera, and what I'm going to do is kind of go around to you all and show you what I'm seeing. So I see a very faint image of my model. So a very faint image of my model. Do you guys see that back there? Okay. Depending on what you want it to look like, you need to manipulate your shutter speed to see how much light you want in. You can manipulate your ISO. Right now my ISO is just very, very low. And then I can also manipulate my umbrella and the angle of my flash. So that's why I'm giving you a little bit of time today if you're curious and then a lot of time tomorrow to really play with this idea of using uh, a transceiver and a receiver and doing something kind of different and out of the norm. This is a more advanced idea and it has a lot of science to do with it, but I'm trying to keep it very, very basic for you today. <coughs> so let's talk about how to direct your model. So I'm just going to talk to him as if he was the client. All right, you ready? All right. Jeremiah, I'm going to have you kind of scoot a little bit closer to the flash. Go ahead and move. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to have you look up into the air as if you were looking towards the heavens. And don't be afraid to get a little <coughs> bit close to your model. Okay? So that when I have my picture, it will look like this. If you want it super close, get close. You shouldn't really have to use your lens when you're in a situation where you can get close to your model, okay? Uh, Cammie, come up here. I'm going to change my model real quick. Change to a female model. So we're going to change the model. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of change some things. I'm going to manipulate some things. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have this up a little bit higher. So I'm changing the angle of my umbrella, making it a little bit higher. Okay. I'm also going to change my umbrella as far as how wide it is. Or actually, you know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm just going to change <coughs> this slightly. Okay. I'm going to see what how it looks different. All right. I'm just going to take a quick test shot of Tammy, just straight on. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. So if you see the picture, Alexis, what do you notice about the picture? <coughs> okay. Is her whole face illuminated? Yeah. No. What's illuminated? <laughs> just the side of her face. You don't have to just do that. You can think about doing on top and having uh, like an upper lighting. You can choose to do a back lighting. I don't want to go over everything with you because I want you to explore and kind of figure out on your own what happens when you change little, little things like your shutter speed, your ISO, the way the light hits the umbrella, the way that it opens and closes. Okay? Yeah? Should I use, like, my cell phone flash if I point it into the umbrella? That's something that you can experiment with, yeah. And um, today we're mainly going to work with just the flash and um, the umbrella, but tomorrow if you want to start working with the octolites too, you can do that as well. Isaac. Does it have to be a flashlight or can we use a, it doesn't have to be like a flash or can we use like a steady light? Now if you use a steady light, typically you won't get the same exact effect that you saw on the camera. You can get a similar effect. So for example, if I just turned on, we'll talk about octolites while we're here. I'm going to turn on this octolite, and you <coughs> turn it on. Octolites, they give you a nice soft lighting. Think about Victoria's Secret models, how wonderful they look and how soft they look. This is the typical lighting that they would use. So I'm going to turn off my receiver <laughs> here because I don't want it to flash. And keep in mind, I'm going to leave the same exact settings for that last picture that you saw where her face was just half lit. I'm going to take the same exact picture with the same settings, just different lighting. Okay. What do you notice? Darker. So it's a lot darker. <coughs> it's 
a lot, lot darker. Now, I can start to change settings on my camera. So, because it's so dark and I want it lighter, I want my model to be illuminated, I'm going to turn my shutter speed down from 250 to about 100. I'm going to take a test shot here. Let's make it low. And what do you notice if I change my shutter speed? It's a lot brighter. It's a lot brighter. Um, I can change and manipulate the way that the oxalite's going to hit. So how I do that, there's a little handle right here. I can loosen this and it can go low. Be careful because these are very flimsy. So let's just say I turn this low. And Isaac, you're my next model. Thank you. So Isaac, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you just kind of sit on the ground. And this is the also something important that I haven't talked about is when you're taking portrait pictures, you want to either do like a bird's eye view or an ant's eye view, or you need to get down with them. So I'm going to take an ant eye view here. Okay. It's a really dark photo, so I'm going to change uh, my setting here. I'm going to make my ISO about from 100 to 400. Isaac, look up at me. And this isn't a shot that I would necessarily turn in. Uh, it is kind of harsh in a lot of ways. Um, it's <laughs> yellow. <laughs> the lighting, the lighting's a little harsh. So if that happens to you, something easy that you can do is simply turn off a couple of those lights to make them not as harsh. So have a very soft lighting now. Okay. So I'm going to take the same shot. Look off in the distance. She's a fabulous <laughs> model. And my image is a little bit better. It's not exactly where I personally want it yet. So I'm going to continue to shoot and manipulate things that I want on my camera setting. Okay. We have, let's see, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Um, in those 15 minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys do a couple different things. You get to choose. You can either choose, I would, I prefer that some of you do the flash photography and kind of experiment with that today. You can uh, turn in latency assignments. You can ask me questions about unconventional photography, uh, things like that. So things that are photography related that will help you along your way for next week. Okay? All right. Anybody want to play around with this? Okay, so Alexis, I'm going to put these on the original settings I had for the original demo. I'm going to turn on the receivers and transmitters so that it's ready to go. And is there anybody who wants to model for Alexis? Okay, so you guys get started. If you simply want to watch and observe, that's okay too. Yep, this is all set ready to go for you. For everybody else that's not participating in the demo, you guys know what you need to get done. For the next 15 minutes, the cameras will still be rolling, so be aware of that as well. Okay? All right, go ahead and get started. It is a studio time, so make sure you guys get that done real quick. Yeah. How much were the flashes? Or? Well, I use a website called AliExpress, and you can get a really expensive flash for, I think I paid $38 for that. And the transmitters and receivers are super expensive. I can give you a little bit of a But yeah, they're really nice things to have. Um, I can email you. Email me, and I'll email you. But, um,
You want to demonstrate in the like personality you want to show the group? Miss Lee. Yeah. I have my Pinterest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 